Hello there viewers, this is Ricky Klein the Cassette Master here to present to you another video. This video I'm working on a project which is a soldering iron controlling device. Uh, this is not my design, this is found on the Circuit, the Cir Circuit Exchange International website and it's supposed to prolong the tip life. Basically you use a thermistor on the iron uh, thermistor on the iron stand and when the iron is in the stand it will heat the thermistor up enough it will turn the iron it won't turn the iron off completely so to speak but it will basically turn off main power to the iron and then it will only pulse the iron with a 20% duty cycle just kind of pulse pulse so, something like that to uh, kind of keep the iron warm but not keep the iron from getting you know fully hot and then whenever you remove the iron from the stand the thermistor would return to room temp or closer to it and the um, a relay will kick on and give full power or just continuous power to the soldering iron the schematic I will show from the website. I will show a revised version that I did to make work with the stuff I have. And I'll also show, it's not together yet. I already breadboarded it and I already tested the breadboarded circuit. But I finally have built the actual circuit here for installing into an enclosure. The breadboarding obviously was done on a standard solderless breadboard, but I just thought I'd have to show this on a video because it just looks really cool having these two little boards. Um, it's got an LM324. The original schematic called for a 358, but I don't have any lying around. LM324 is a quad op amp, while the 358 is two op amps. So two of the op amps in here aren't even being used, but it still um, the, the chip still works. And then I got a 555 here as a one shot. It uh, turns the iron on to allow it to warm up when you first turn on the entire device. And then after I changed the timing to a minute, about a minute and a half, slightly more, um, it will go into the controlling mode and an opto isolator here for pulsing the iron. And it's got a track transistor to drive a relay and it's just I thought it looked really cool seeing the circuitry the way I have these two boards connected with these little standoffs it looks all crazy in there of course each board was soldered individually then I joined them and then did anything that went in between the boards and it really gives an interesting style I thought it would be cool to make a video of this not just take pictures but take make a video of it before I install it into the enclosure so anyway hope you enjoy the presentation so far hehe <laughs> viewers update haven't tested it after soldering it yet but I just completed the soldering of this device. There's a lot to it, as you can see. And anyway, hopefully it'll work the first time. Brace yourselves. Viewers, now uh, I've, I've tested it. I ended up uh, replacing the Triac switching the main terminal one and main terminal two around i had the main terminal one and main terminal two terminals swapped didn't realize it it looks well i thought it was right according to the schematic but i'm guessing that if for some reason i had to switch them around for it to work and um but of course i replaced the track in the process thinking the track was faulty at first but finally the device can be put back together it's not back to it's not together yet but it's here it is, you know. And notice um, the neon light on the front there, on the far right, 
amber indicator is on solid and whenever I do this warm the thermistor notice now it's blinking to pulse the iron and then whenever it gets to room temperature again it should go solid now I can adjust the sensitivity with this uh, pot don't have any spare small knobs at the moment so it's just a knobless pot green LED means it's ready to go whenever you first turn it on the red LED comes on while it puts the iron out on continuous power to heat it up here pictured is the device complete Here is a standard Weller soldering iron, a 35 watt example. The soldering stand has been mounted to the case. Let's go ahead and energize the device. That wasn't the Pico fuse. Putting this thing together wasn't easy. Matter of fact, the soldering iron isn't even plugged into the thing, so I don't know why or what exactly happened, but that sound was not a good sound. GFCI outlet just uh, went. Not sure why. It didn't go that time. Let's try running the uh, iron. So that pop that you heard was the GFCI outlet. It could have just misfired. It might have just been um, very close to the point of tripping it. Maybe a, maybe the sudden current may be enough. But so right now the iron should be being heated up. Let's see if I have voltage coming out of the uh, outlet. Let's hope I do because this thing was not easy to cut the case cover put on at all. I got 121 volts AC so the soldering iron should be heating right now. You can see that um, the neon indicator here is on showing that it is supplying power to the iron. The red LED here shows that it is still in the warm up cycle, which is done by the one shot multi vibrator of the 555. Once the green LED ignites, we should have a soldering iron that is heated up enough. Now it's not igniting from, from uh, it's not turning on from it being. It being heated up enough is not done from sensing the heat. It's just done from the timer. I already timed how long it took this specific iron to heat up. Right now it's pulsing the iron, but we really don't want it to be pulsing right now. So we're going to have to adjust the uh, thermistor. There. Now it is on constantly. We're going to put the iron back on. It should go in. It should start pulsing soon. Once the thermistor is heated up enough by the iron. At least let's hope. I have the thermistor mounted underneath the iron, which is how the original design um, showed that it should or that it should be put. So so far, it is not going into blinking mode, but we'll give it a moment. And by blinking mode, I mean pulsing the iron. We might need to uh, adjust this just a bit. Just a slight bit. So let's try that. Pulsing the iron. Take the iron off.
currently in pull. Let's see if it's still hot enough to melt that. It's hot enough to melt that. Come on. Let me blow on the thermistor. Oh, wait, I didn't even have to blow on the thermistor. It just happened to time, so there it goes. Man, it's right in there, too. Started blinking again. It's right in there. So, adjusting the trimmer might be one of those things that's useful. So, we'll try that again. Current temperature in the space is 68 degrees Fahrenheit, as shown on this little Honeywell thermostat, which isn't hooked up to anything, it's just a spare stat. I just have it over here because the temperature where the actual thermostat is is a little bit different. So right now, soldering iron is full on. And we'll put it back in the stand. See how long it takes for it to uh, start pulsing the iron again. Still wonder if it would, there it goes. So, looks like I have the, uh, uh, it's, it stopped, but maybe it give it a little bit more heat and it might go back. As long as it sits there longer, perhaps. It's right in that sweet spot there on the setting of the trimmer. Right on that sweet spot. Maybe it would be better if I mounted the thermistor more on the side and on underneath. I think we'll still want to try it like this for now. I spent almost all day working on this. Last night I drilled the holes. There it goes. I'm still riding that sweet spot. <laughs> it's like riding the stimmy tax. Well, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Of course, I'll be showing the schematics and I'll be showing, you know, stuff like that. So, it's a uh, fun little project. It's an interesting little project. Uh, combining uh, DC electronics with uh, mains powered AC electronics, opto isolators, triax, uh, temperature control system, relays, operational amplifiers, timers. It really is a good little project. And um, it looks like our little system is working. Take the iron off, and I guess if I just get impatient with it, now let's see, it's been blinking for a while. Let's see if it's still hot enough to melt solder. You betcha it's hot enough to melt solder, so. And if I get a little impatient with it and I need to give it a fire, I could always just blow on the thermistor. That cools it down a lot quicker. Anyway, <laughs> fun little project, eh? <laughs> next step, next project after I've been working on this all day, this day's uh, soldering isn't going to be over because I'm going to be uh, working on uh, recapping the record graph because I got my new capacitors in the mail just yesterday. But I wanted to go ahead and finish this project first before I started recapping the record graph. Here's a schematic as it was shown on the Circuit Exchange International. I will put a link in the description. Again, this is not my design. It was designed by someone referenced on the website. And um, anyway, I will show my copied schematic of it where I made some slight changes. So here's my copied down schematic with changes. So I didn't have an LM358 lying around, so I used an LM324. The schematic is highlighted in red pencil as because I was doing that as I was soldering it together so I could keep track of what was done. But um, 
I on mine had to switch the non-inverting input and the inver and, and the inverting input of the um, operational amplifier right here. I think probably the original design had a thermistor that acted in the opposite way that mine did. I originally said for a 10k thermistor, my thermistor was around roughly 8 kilo ohms at uh, room temperature and the resistance would decrease when I warmed it. And I replaced the 33k ohm resistor with a 15k ohm uh, potentiometer that I could use to adjust the um, the temperature that it that it trips at or that it activates at there and I also changed the values here which gives me roughly from what I timed a little bit over a minute and a half almost three minutes of warm-up time on the soldering iron 2.7 uh, 2.7 mega ohm resistor there 22 microfarad capacitor there ended up giving me what I wanted when I tested it on the breadboard the original values it was a little short for my soldering iron and then um, everything else is pretty much the same except right here um, I'm using a MOC 3011 opto isolator because I don't have an MOC 3020 but the MOC 3011 also has a triac output and um, here I in red wrote A1 down there and A2 up there or the same as terminal 1 terminal 2 but those ended up being backwards from how I had it I have the hot on the AC line going to this connection since that's the part that's being switched by the relay and being switched by the triac and I have the neutral just connected to the neutral on the outlet on the back for the soldering iron I was originally hooking it up the other way and I realized wait a second I want to switch the hot I want to leave the neutral connected so I did that and later as it turned out I had to have A2 of the triac hooked up to the hot side a1 of the triac was the area that goes out to the soldering iron and the basic pin out of the triac was uh, A1, A2 and gate or T1, T2, gate, main terminal 1, main terminal 2, gate, you know you get the drift and um, so that's the um, special device okay so now let's look at the device itself again I think you've seen basically what it looked like but here is kind of a close-up of it together the red LED for warm-up green LED for ready and the neon which monitors the load so I can easily see uh, the behavior of the soldering iron itself I got my 15 kilo ohm uh, potentiometer my on off switch and um, my sponge and on the back you don't have to have a GFCI outlet, it's just that I was scrounging around for any old outlets lying around at work and I managed to find an old unused outlet sitting in a drawer of various random knickknacks and I grabbed that and um, jigsawed a square hole on there, a rectangular hole on there to fit the outlet. Of course I'd only be using one of the sockets because I'm not going to be controlling two irons unless I wanted to use one iron to control the other iron with which would be kind of weird <laughs> but um anyway it's just neat to see the final product I got the thermistor right there and uh, this white stuff was a wire marker uh, hosing from work you could use to label wires and anyway it makes a great little insulation kind of tubing some zip ties also from work and um, anyway good resources over there and um, anyway it's a neat little device put the put the sponge back on there and when you plug in your iron and you can do your soldering and it's 
should uh, control the temperature of the soldering iron a little bit more and prolong the life of the tip which is the uh, reason why I built this thing because I've recently gotten some nice soldering irons or nicer soldering irons that I've had they're not anything fancy but they're better soldering irons than I had and they had good condition tips and I thought you know I want to keep those tips good because I've gone through so many tips in the past they just burn up and they get all messed up and they they just get ruined so yeah that's enough chin wagon about this project.